Nice. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, at first, did you receive my message yesterday? Nice. Saying a lot of push. Yeah. 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 Okay. So at first, I want to show you our canvas. Okay. So you can find the course instructions in this module. I usually upload the lecture notes here, and all lectures are recorded. So in the evening of each lecture, I upload the recorded lecture. But for sure, it's better to attend the lecture here in the lecture room to have meaningful discussions. And here in this section, I will upload some problem sets. And after we discuss these problems, I will upload their solutions, OK? And here is the lab section. This is the lab guide. I really recommend you to read it to understand what is required from you in the lab, OK? And this is the template of your report. And this is our first lab PDF, OK? Uh, in this lab, you are required at first to uh, submit pre-lab answers at the start of the lab, okay? And during the lab, your TA will discuss with you how can you implement your written solution in the pre-lab into a MATLAB code to uh, uh, write MATLAB code that can implement some algorithms, some protocols, okay? So uh, for each lab, I will give you a starter code as a, a, an introduction for your code and what is required from you to, to write in MATLAB. All of you can write in MATLAB. Yes. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you, your TA will help you uh, uh, in the lab. I think you, you have two hours in each lab, okay? So uh, your TA will help you in implementing the code, okay? So this is our canvas. Here you can find the Zoom link for each lecture if you planning to uh, attend uh, online. Okay, this is our canvas. Uh, let's start our lecture today. At first, I will make a quick revision, but anyone has any question related to our last lecture? Okay, let's have mutual discussion in this quick revision. Uh, Okay, so as a quick revision, we can classify the services provided through communication networks into two types based on the required quality of service. We have synchronous services such as live streaming, video calls, phone calls, real time services, and asynchronous services such as file sharing, web browsing, sending emails, and synchronous services, and synchronous services. We have here delay and errors. In synchronous services, what about delay? Errors. Okay. So delay, uh, uh, synchronous services are delay sensitive. We want to minimize the delay as much as we can, as they are real-time services, okay? What about errors? Okay, it can tolerate it, okay? So it is, there is a relation between the delay and errors. If you don't accept, to have some delay, for sure, you will have errors, okay? On the other side, in asynchronous 
service, the delay is accepted or acceptable, and the errors not acceptable. Okay, these are the quality of service that we must satisfy when we are designing a network. How can this quality of service can be realized? This can be realized through using network sharing. Here, as we can see, data from multiple sources move through the same communication links, the same routers, the same switches. So resources, network resources must be shared. Why do we need resource sharing? We need resource sharing to increase the number of connected devices to our network, the number of connected users that I can serve at the same time, okay? And here we demonstrated that as the network dimension grow, resource sharing becomes necessary. And we demonstrated that we have three types of communication networks based on the network dimension. We have WAN, MAN, and LAN. And in WAN, the data move across the world. In MAN, data move across city. In LAN, data move across small network, like here in our campus, in this building, in this office, okay? And all of these little types, we need resource sharing. As here, we have LAN network now in this room using Wi-Fi connection, okay? All of us are sharing the network resources now. All of you can connect to the network. You can make web browsing and you can send a text message at the same time over the same network. So you are using the same network at the same time. So we are sharing the resources now, okay? So this indicates the importance of having resource sharing in our network design. And we introduced circuit switching as an example for resource sharing. And as we know, circuit switching is a resource sharing strategy. The basic idea of circuit switching, we allocate to each user in the network portion of the network resources. This is allocated to you all the time. Okay, so the resource, the source, sorry, source, the source now, the sender has end-to-end permanent connection with the destination. We establish to you, as the mobile operator, establish to each user permanent connection to its destination. So we have virtual direct link to the destination. To clarify this point more, here, this is an example, as you can see in this figure. In this figure, okay. Here, this is a sender and this is the receiver, okay? So the mobile operator or the network operator will allocate to this sender portion of the resources through this link, okay? So the only way for this source to communicate with this destination is via this way, okay? As your allocated resources are allocated to you in this link. Okay, so it seems that you have virtual direct link to the destination. This is your virtual direct link. So in circuit switching, we don't need to have the destination address in the transmission of data. Why? At the end of this way, you will reach, you will reach to your destination. Okay, so you don't need to have the destination address. We will see after in this lecture, okay, in this lecture, we will see that, and sometimes you will need the destination address, and you will see the difference. 
why in circuit switching I don't need to have destination address and when should I need the destination address. So here in circuit switching, as you have permanent connection to the destination, you don't need to have or to know the destination address. So this is very simple for data routing, okay? And once the communication is completed, your connection is ended and this link is released. So anyone else can use it, but at the moment that this link is allocated to you or the portion of this link is allocated to you, no one can share this link with you, okay? So in the next slide, we indicated that how can resources be allocated to each user? As I told you, each user has a varying data rate. At some times, you need low data rate to send the text message, to make web browsing. At other sometimes, you may need high data rate to uh, download a game, to uh, make video call, for example. So you, as a user, require varying data rate. It depends on the application that you are using at this point, okay? So, but at circuit switching, they allocate to you permanent resources, not varying, okay? So this, they, they are constant to you. You will have constant resources allocated to you. So how can circuit switching allocate resources to users? It will ask you, what is your rate? You will say at some times, my, uh, I can send at low data rate and I can send at maximum data rate. And many times I don't send anything. So your rate is varying from zero to our maximum. Okay. In circuit switching, okay, I will allocate to you your maximum rate. Okay, that's good for me. <laughs> you have to, to, to allocate to me my maximum data rate. Okay, but most of times you will not use this maximum rate. As you can see, sometimes you can send a, a text message with making web browsing. You don't need this maximum rate, but this is the technique used in circuit switch. And as I told you, circuit switching was the technique used in old wired telephone networks and in the first generation of mobile networks and in 2G, okay? Okay, so you have now your maximum data rate. This is the resource allocated to you all the time. Even if you don't need it, you have your maximum rate, okay? So you have many advantages, such as you have guaranteed quality of service, your quality of service that you need is very high, okay? You have dedicated link or resource allocated to you, okay? You, the delay in the connection is very, very, very low as you, you are allocated your maximum rate. So the delay is very, very, very low. You can neglect it, okay? And you have simple data routing and at the end, you have continuous delivery. You can transmit your whole message at one time. This is continuous delivery, okay? But th these are the advantages of circuit switch. In our last lecture, we discussed together the disadvantages of circuit switch. Yes, through introducing these two examples. In this example, here, we have, you can transmit uh, at this moment one kilo bit per second while the capacity of the shared link is 10 kilo bit per second. So you are using only 10% of the total resource available in this link. So we, the resource, so the resources are underutilized in this example. In the 
Second example here, we calculated the number of users that can be served using this network. And we, in this example here, we uh, have that the maximum rate of each user is uh, uh, one kilowatt per second. And the total capacity of the link equal to 10 kilowatt per second. So we calculated the number of users as the total capacity divided by the maximum rate and it equals 10 by one is equal 10 users. So you can only serve 10 users at the same time, okay? So here we can discuss the disadvantage of circuit switching. Here we have the maximum number of users that I can serve at the same moment is very small. Why this is very small? Because I allocate to each user the maximum rate. So I consume my available resources. So I can serve only few little number of users at the same moment, okay? This is the first, the first disadvantage. The second disadvantage that the probability I allocate to you, your maximum rate, but most of times, total transmission rate over the shared link is less than the total capacity of the link, okay? So the link is underutilized. We don't use all the resources available. So we are wasting our resources. Bandwidth is, is wasted here in circuit switch. The third disadvantage that in circuit switching, we have increased blocked connections. As we have a discussion in our last lecture, here in this network, we can serve only 10 users at the same moment. But if we have 15, I will serve 10 and block five. As I don't have available resources to the other five users, okay? So here we have increased the block to connections. We are unable to offer okay service to everyone. Why we are unable to offer okay or services to everyone because we are allocating to everyone its maximum rate. So I consume my resources. So we can summarize the main disadvantage of circuit switching in this book, in this boy, that we allocate to each user its maximum rate. By allocating to each user maximum rate, I waste my resources. My resources are underutilized. I can't serve everyone. I have limited number of users that I can serve. This number is very small, okay? So these are the disadvantages of circuit switch. How can we overcome these disadvantages? That's we will see now through using another technique called bucket switching. Till now, everything is okay, clear for you. Anyone has any question? Okay, this is perfect. Okay, so here we have bucket switching. At first, let's have virtual discussion. We know now that the main disadvantage of circuit switching is in circuit, sw in circuit switching, we allocate the maximum rate to each user, okay? We want to overcome this problem. How can we do it? Next. Anything else? Allowing data to travel through multiple different pathways. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. The both answers 
are correct. I don't have to allocate to you your maximum rate. Okay. I don't have to make you transmit your data through certain way to destination. You can take different ways at the same time. Okay. So all of these answers are the basic idea of packet switching. Packet switching is the main used technique now in internet and in 3G, 4G, 5G, okay? We are now developing more techniques to overcome, to, to improve, sorry, to improve the performance of packet switching here to make this technique suitable for all services, okay? So the basic idea of packet switching as full. At first, in circuit switching, you transmit your whole message at one time, okay? Here in packet switching, no, we will not do this. You have a message, you will send the text message to me. This is your text message. How are you? Okay, this is your whole message. In packet switching, we will divide this whole message into small messages or small parts. So we will have how are you. So I divide now the whole message into small packets. This part is full packet. Okay. Okay. So now I have three small messages that I want to transmit. Okay. After that, I will assign to each message sequence number. So this is my first message, small message. This is the second one. This is the third one. Okay, this is the sequence number of, each, of every uh, bucket I have, okay? After that, I will add the source address, my address, and the destination address. These are all done in binary? Yes. Okay. As this is the language that computer networks can understand. Okay. So, and after that, I will transmit each bucket or each message individually. Okay. So, here, data is divided into buckets. Each bucket contains some identification information such as the sequence number, the source address, and the destination address. And I transmit each bucket in individual way. Okay, so why I, I need to put sequence number and why do I need to put the source and destination address? So that when the message gets there, it goes like to what order to go back in and also like where it has to go to. That's perfect. The first reason you are sending your buckets in an individual way. So at this moment, I will forward the first bucket. Okay, so the first bucket may take this part. Okay. And the second moment, I will forward my second bucket. So May the, the second bucket may take this different. At the third moment, I will transmit my third bucket. So it can take another different box. So at the end, at the destination, okay, based on the speed of each link, okay, and the other parameters such as delay, congestion, the buckets may arrive, may arrive at destination out of order. 
So the destination may receive the third bucket before receiving your first bucket. So we need to have sequence number associated to each bucket so that the receiver can reorder again the bucket. So uh, at the destination, the destination receive, for example, may, may receive at first bucket three, then one and two. So based on this sequence number, the destination will reorder the received buckets again to one, two, three. So the receiver now can read your message. How are you? Okay, so this is the import, the importance of using sequence now. What about the source and destination address? Okay, as you can see now, you don't have a located link to you. You can use any link. Okay, you can send uh, your data in different ways, in different routes. Okay, so. We need to know here, here, this router and this router and this router need to know where should I send this data? Okay, so when you forward your message, this router will open it, not, not the message, will open this header only, okay? And see, yeah, you, are, you want to forward it to the destination address, Mahmoud? Okay, I, I will forward it, okay? And also the router must know the source address. When you are forward, when you are forwarding a mail to anyone, you are writing your the sender information and the receiver information. Yes. So this is for security issues. Okay. Some may, may, maybe this definition is not allowed to receive messages from you. Okay. This is for security issues. So we must indicate the source address so that the destination and the router based on your security issues in this network know who is the sender and who is the receiver and to use it in your data routing, okay? As here, we don't have direct link. You may send your data in this way, in this way, in, in different ways, okay? So we will need to make data routing, okay? So here we need to have our source address and destination address. If you want to compare it with circuit switching and circuit switching, we don't need to have the sequence number as we transmit the whole message at, at the same time. And we don't have to know the destination address as it is. You have dedicated direct virtual direct link to the destination. So here are some uh, 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 this similarities to uh, 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 the circuit switching. Okay, you can. Uh, do you know, like translating data that was in a few gigabytes, let's say? So you have you know millions of bits. Would this sequencing order slow things down a little bit? Like when it arrives as destination, and it has to sift through every bit and just, like organize it. Would that be a significant delay? Yes. So here. Bucket switching, uh, most of times, uh, uh, is used in transmitting data for asynchronous asynchronous services where delay is acceptable. Okay, but at the end, at the end of your transmission, okay, you will you are confident that your transmission is done in a successful way. So, what happened? Okay, you. This is the sender, and this is the receiver, and you will forward your buckets in some way to this receiver. If you remember, the receiver, when you, you, when you transmit a bucket, it will check if this bucket received in a, in a successful way or not. If, if this bucket is corrupted, it will resend to you, please resend it again, and you will we send it again, and at the end, it will send you an acknowledgement, okay? Most of the research work now are working in this area, how to minimize the delay in bucket switching. We want bucket switching to be suitable for synchronous services also, for voice also, 
Okay, so you will see in the next lectures some of advanced protocols, some of advanced techniques that can minimize this, this delay and they make packet switching suitable for both, for voice and data. And when I say data, I mean web browsing, file sharing, voice, I mean that real-time applications, okay? So you are correct. We have delay here in, in, in packet switch. And returning back to circuit switching, we don't have this delay, okay? In transmission, you transmit your whole message at one time. You don't, you don't have to divide your message into small parts and uh, assign some identif identification information to each packet and they make data routing. Data routing is not an easy process. It is difficult. It consumes the process. Consumes the time also. Okay, so this is the main disadvantage of packet switching, as you can see. So here, as I told you, ah, okay. And in packet switching, you may use more than one route or one way to the destination. And for sure, you here you don't have allocated resources to you. Okay, you have a data you transmit this data and in the network nodes, they will determine. We have available resources, okay, transmit. We don't have, we can make some buffering here, store this data for some moments when we have available resources, uh, when the congestion problem is solved, transmit. So the use technique, and most of network resources of network devices here is based on store and forward. Store and forward. Store, if I don't have available resources to you. Once I have, I will forward it. Okay. I want to indicate also no one have the control over the communication links or the communication resources all the time. Backet switching, you will use, I will divide the time, the transmission time between users. For example, we are here, eight users, and this is the time. Time. Okay. I will divide the transmission time between the eight users. Okay. So each user will have certain time slot. So at the same moment, the transmitted data consists of different buckets from different users, okay? So this is the transmission data that I have. I have your first bucket, maybe the third bucket of another user, maybe the fifth bucket from another user, okay? so. In circuit switching, you are transmitting your message on certain portion alone. No one share this resource with you. But here in packet switching, resources are shared. I divide the transmission time between users, and each user will, will be allocated certain time slot. Okay, and in the transmission data transmitted over the shared link, it consists of different packets from different users. So that's why I need in each packet to have additional header that identify the source address and destination address. As I have different packets at the same transmission, each packet has its own source address and its own destination address, okay? So here uh, 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 in packet switching, Resources are not splitted, are not allocated to certain users, but is shared between users. This is clear? Okay. So here, no dedicated circuit is allocated to each user. Resources are shared, okay? We can send our packets 
through different ways, okay? We share resources. Resources are shared between all of the users in the network, okay? We, as I told you, in packet switching, it is used in internet. It is the current technique used uh, in most modern, modern applications now in our uh, computer networks and mobile networks, okay? And in order to maximize the resource utilization, we use technique called a statistical multiplex. What is a statistical multiplex? Okay. In second switching, I allocate to you your maximum data rate. Okay. Here in bucket switching, I will allow you to, tra to transmit not in maximum data rate, but in your average data rate, okay? So each user, as I told you, has varying data rate. Sometimes you are transmitting at low data rates. Sometimes you are transmitting at high data rates, okay? So what is your average, okay? This average can, uh, 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 the average rate can be used as your transmission data rate, okay? So what if I told you, in case of the number of connected devices, we can calculate the number of connected devices in circuit switching by dividing the total shared link capacity divided by the maximum rate. Here in packet switching, we will, we will calculate the total number of devices connected together by dividing the total capacity of the link by the expected rate of each user. At first, if we want to compare between the expected rate and the maximum rate, which number is bigger? Is that the largest maximum rate? Okay, so here, which quantity will be the largest? This one. Any answer? Ed? You are. Is this correct? I agree. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. So we can say here. In bucket switching, it can serve more number of connected devices than in circuit switch. Okay. Does that change? Like, it just continuously checks the. Uh, yes. Rate? Yeah. Okay. To, and, and we must check this in a periodic way to increase that utilization of the network resources. If we don't check in regular way your average rate. I return back to the main disadvantage of circuit switch. I waste my resources as maybe uh, at this moment, your average rate may be less than your average rate at another uh, time, okay? So I must in regular way revise with you what is your average rate, what is with you your average rate, okay? So here, the main advantage of packet switching, it can serve more number of users at the same time. For example, and if you remember the example of circuit switching that we have uh, many users and each user can transmit uh, uh, one kilowatt per second as maximum rate. Okay, and we if you remember, we calculated the number of connected devices and, and, and the capacity of the link was 10 kilobit per second. And we calculated the number of connected devices by C by R maximum, 10 by one is equal 10 users. Okay, this is in the circuit switching example. If I told you the expected rate for each user is 0.5 and want from you to calculate 
the maximum number uh, the, the maximum number of users that can be connected to this network. So we will you will say that c by r expected is equal to 10 divided by 0 0.5, which will equal 20. So here in the same example, okay, this example indicate indicates that the number of connected devices in packet switching can be more than that achieved in circuit switch. Also, also here that I allocate to you your expected rate, but at some times you may need more than this expected rate. Okay, so we have the probability here that the actual, the, the total actual transmitted rate to be greater than the rates shared between all the users, okay? This probability can happen, but this probability is very small. So here in packet switching, we allow more of users to share the network with less data rates, and this can cause congestion and this congestion can cause delay okay but at the end i increase the number of connected devices so you must pay <laughs> this is the expenses of increasing the number of connected devices in your network you want to increase the number of connected devices and if you if you are the mobile operator you are the ceo of the company what do you want? You want to make profit, revenue. How you can make revenue? <laughs> this is not the most important thing in business. I can make revenue if I have more customers, if I can serve more customers. So the first priority, I want to increase my uh, the, the, the number of connected devices to my network, okay? If you are using the my network, you are paying for the bandwidth. When you are making a phone call, you are paying for the price of this minute, okay? So in the design, this is the basic idea for the mobile operators. I want at first to increase the number of connected devices. The second priority is to satisfy your quality of service support. But at first, I want to increase the number of connected devices. This is the first priority for all the designers. So here, the price or the excellence of increasing the number of connected devices is increasing the delay, increasing the uh, congestion, increasing collisions between packets, okay? All of these are the disadvantage of the packet switching, okay? But this is our research now to overcome these disadvantages. You will see in the next lecture, how can we minimize the delay? How can we minimize congestion? How can we make data routing more simple, okay? So don't worry, packet switching is still valid. But till now, for the, from its basic idea, it has some problems. And this is what we already, we already solved it, and we are working to solve also. We, every day we are proposing more techniques to reduce the delay, to increase the number of connected devices, to uh, uh, how to overcome the collisions, how to minimize the probability of error, okay? okay. So if we have like, let's say a computer using something small browsing the web, like 50 meg or 50 kilobytes per second, and then you suddenly need to jump to a download of, you know, it's a 10 gigabyte download and you want as much as you can. How would the average change? Because if we're taking the average over a period of time, we were sitting on a browser for an hour using such a small data rate for so long, and then you needed a jump, how does it take an average throughout that time? Okay. 
I am dealing here in buckets, but in bucket switching, deal with the session, not the user. Okay, so you said that I'm making web browsing. It consumes load rate. And after that, I switch to another application to make to download again high data rate. Okay, so in the first application, you have your own buckets. Okay, and in the second application, you have your own buckets. And the, the data rate of this application is different from the data rate of this application. Okay, in bucket switching, it deals with session. So there is we are dealing for you with you now as you are two virtual persons. The first one, the first virtual one is making web browsing, and the second virtual one is making a, a downloading file or downloading a game. Okay, and every virtual person has its own average rate. As when you are using web browsing, your rate is not constant. Sometimes when you are making web browsing, you just scroll down, load the rate. But at some at some time, you may stop and start watching a video. Your data rate is increased. The quality of the video was very low, so you select HD quality. So your data rate increased. So even in each application, your data rate is varying, not constant. Okay. So to answer this, your question. Communication network deals with you as many virtual person. Every virtual person is using certain session. And this is, this is the reason that at the same moment, at the same moment, you can send a message and you are download, you, 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 you make download for a file, okay? And you have a voice call at the same moment. This is correct. Anyone here can use the three services at the same time. Yeah, we are now using video conferencing. And I can send a message via Zoom, okay? And on the background, I already uh, downloaded again three different applications, three different sessions with different data rates, okay? So this is, uh, is this clear for you? Okay. So how can we, how can we, any comment? No. Okay. <laughs> I just said good question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's really perfect. Good question. Okay. So the number of users that can be connected to bucket switching is still bounded. We have our bound. We can calculate this bound using shared bound. And we will see an example in this lecture. So how can we use Churn bound to calculate the maximum of users in circuit switching, in packet switching. We have two types of packet switching. The first type is datagram packet switching, which is the most common used technique in packet switching. In datagram, we can send our packets in different routes, okay, in different ways, okay. But in virtual circuit packet switching, all the buckets must be sent over the same link. Okay, as if, if, if you see its name, virtual circuit, bucket switch. So here we divide our message into small buckets, but still we, we, we still need to transmit our buckets over the same link. So virtual circuit, okay? So the most common technique in bucket switching is using datagram bucket switching. So we can summarize the advantage and disadvantage of packet switching as we can see here in, in the advantage, it is easy of connection. You transmit each packet individually, okay? And we try to minimize the wasted bandwidth, support the variable rates, and we have less blocking, blocking connections at, as we uh, increase the number of connected devices to our network and we have scalability. We can increase the dimension of our network in very easy way. But the disadvantage, we data data traffic is split, okay? And buckets may arrive out of order. So at the destination, it will require to reorder it again. And this consume time. We have possible congestion if the actual 
transmitted rate is greater than the expected rate, okay? So if the actual rate in, is greater than the total capacity of the link, we will have collision. How we will overcome it? We, we will make some buffering. We will store some buckets until the collision is ended. And after that, we retransmit it. So we have delay, okay? More connections, but of lesser quality. If I give you your maximum data rate to transmit, you have high quality. But I will I will give you here less data rate, expected, expected data rate. So I reduce the quality provided to you. Okay. So these are the main disadvantages of packet switching. We have 10 minutes. Uh, we have negative negative one minute. minute. <laughs> You have, you have a lecture after. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so what I will do now, okay, I uploaded the problem cells in uh, uh, your canvas. You can have a look for this. There are two problems, and I will upload the solution of this problem. Okay. Or is this time for practice? This is for practice for you, for better understanding of the topic. Okay. So you can have a look of, for these two problems, okay? And if anyone have any problem to understand the, uh, the solution of these problems, you can return back to me. You can discuss the solution with me during my uh, our office hours. We have tomorrow, uh, yeah, Tuesday tomorrow from 12 to 2 p.m. If anyone ha has any question, we can discuss this discuss it uh, during our office uh, hours, okay? Uh, we can discuss any question here in the next lecture, okay? So I will let uh, the problem sets and the solution for you to understand it. And if anyone has any question, return it back to me. In the next lecture, we will discuss the layered architecture of the communication network. I think everyone wants to know what happened when I write a message and send it in the virtual machines. In from the moment of writing a message till this message is received as a destination. What happened? This is this will be the topic of our next lecture. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.